Today we go one step further into understanding hypoxia types and integrating anomalies into oxygen cascade for logical therapeutic conclusions. We will cover the initial four stages of oxygen cascade from atmosphere to alveolar capillary interface. Let's start then. Pressure of oxygen in atmosphere at sea level is barometric pressure multiplied by oxygen fraction of 0.21. So 159 millimeters of mercury. The target of having this high oxygen pressure is primarily at alveolo-capillary interface. This exchange of oxygen obeys Henry's law, which states that the solubility of any gas in liquid is directly proportional to its pressure gradient between the liquid and air above. So if you increase the pressure of gas above water, more gas molecules will dissolve into water proportionately. The same phenomena applies to alveoli where air in the alveoli containing a certain pressure of oxygen shown here in green molecules. Since pressure of oxygen is higher in alveoli compared to deoxygenated capillary blood, more oxygen diffuses into plasma until equilibrium is achieved between the two medium. Right, so as per the equation, two factors dictate the atmosphere pressure of oxygen around us. Number one, the barometric pressure. And number two, the fraction of oxygen being inspired. At sea level, barometric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. On extreme end, let's compare it with Mount Everest summit, located at 8900 meters above sea level. As we ascend around 5500 meters above sea level, the barometric pressure is literally reduced by half. At the summit of Everest, the barometric pressure is reportedly 235 millimeters of mercury. Oxygen fraction of air will stay at 21%, but now the pressure of oxygen in air at summit will be 235 multiplied by 0.21 equals 50 millimeters of mercury, which cannot be enough to match with the high oxygen demand by the muscles for hiking exercise. So how can hikers raise pressure of oxygen being inspired at summit? By raising the fraction of oxygen, right? So now inspiring 100% oxygen at 235 millimeters of mercury yields a pressure of inspired oxygen at 235 multiplied by 1.0. So 235 millimeters of mercury. Good enough compared to breathing 50 millimeters of oxygen pressure of unassisted breathing, right? Now you understand the rationale behind using various oxygen therapies from simple oxygen mask to venturi system which raises the fraction of inspired oxygen from 40% to some devices capable of delivering even 100% oxygen. But that's a topic for another day. So at first stage of oxygen cascade, what type of hypoxia can occur? Hypoxemic hypoxia, which is caused by inadequate oxygen transport to the alveoli or across the alveoli. So in stage one, it is caused either by low barometric pressure as in altitude hypoxia or low FiO2 such as asphyxiation in enclosed tight spaces. Management of course is either acclimatizing to the new heights gradually and oxygen therapies to raise the FiO2. Worth mentioning here is manipulating this equation to raise the barometric pressures to two to three times normal to deliver extremely high oxygen pressures also called the hyperbaric oxygen therapies. Used primarily for treating carbon monoxide poisoning to reduce the hemoglobin carbon monoxide half-lives or treating gangrene, wound healing, infections or ischemic tissues by delivering high pressures of arterial oxygen. Quickly going through the airways, so once inside the airways, humidification process starts where air is maximally saturated by water vapor at 37 degrees Celsius. This drops the oxygen pressure to 149 millimeters of mercury. Of course, humidification is essential for optimal functioning of airways and alveoli. We utilize HME filters or active humidifiers in operation theaters for same reason and reducing hypersensitivity of airways through nebulizations. So again, the same type of hypoxia can occur at airway level. Any obstruction creating a hurdle in transport of oxygen from atmosphere to alveoli. It can be extrathoracic such as apnea hypopnea of obstructive sleep apnea or a large goiter compressing the airway or intrathoracic obstructions as caused by hypersensitive airways of asthma, COPD or reduced expansion of lung caused by fibrosis or restrictive lung diseases. 
Before moving to the third stage of cascade, it is essential to talk of convective mass transport system of the lungs. This cyclic breathing of inspiration and expiration over an average time helps constantly maintain alveolar oxygen pressures of around 100 millimeters of mercury integrated with carbon dioxide levels. We know that minute ventilation is respiratory rate into tidal volume. The sensors dictating this breathing cycle pattern are central ones in medulla and peripheral chemoreceptors located in aortic and carotid bodies. Central chemoreceptors are sensitive to carbon dioxide. Since carbon dioxide can cross the blood-brain barrier, it causes pH changes in CSF that in turn stimulates the central receptors in medulla which can alter the minute ventilation. This is such a smooth system that even a 1 mm mercury change of pressure of carbon dioxide causes drastic increase in minute ventilation of 2 to 5 liters per minute. Now as per the equation, then carbon dioxide pressure is CO2 production divided by alveolar or minute ventilation. So adding these two formulas in the table, peripheral chemoreceptors are more sensitive to oxygen pressures. So the key events occurring in lungs include minute ventilation process, static and dynamic resistances and air flows, and thirdly, the hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. Now, hypoxia causes vasodilation in whole body except the lungs, where vasoconstriction occurs. This paradoxical effect helps divert the blood to more ventilated units in an effort to counter any ventilation perfusion mismatch. For example, we have a well-ventilated alveolus with poor perfusion called dead space, and we have a collapsed alveolus with less ventilation, but perfusion is good, and this is called shunt. Due to low pressure of oxygen in collapsed alveolus, hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction will occur here and this will divert the blood away from collapsed alveolus and towards better ventilated alveoli for good gas exchange. Hemoglobin oxygen dissociation curve plays a huge role here too. This we will discuss in the next episode. So same type of hypoxia called hypoxemic hypoxia occurs if derangement occurs in this convective mass transport system. Hypoventilation such as caused by opioids or increased resistance to air flows or inhibition of hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction with inhalational anesthetics especially during one lung ventilation can lead to more shunt and hypoxia. So medical management includes reversal of opioid overdose with naloxone and also good anesthetic techniques to avoid inhibition of hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. Something we will discuss in detail some other day. The oxygen after humidification has reached the alveoli now. We are already awaiting carbon dioxide welcomes with dilutional effects. So alveolar gas equation is vital here with same equation of humidification minus the CO2 factor. So PaCO2 or arterial carbon dioxide divided by respiratory quotient. So 760 minus 47 into 0.21 minus 40 which is the normal arterial carbon dioxide levels divided by respiratory quotient of 0 0.8 so now 149 minus 50 hence the pressure of oxygen in alveoli is 99 millimeters of mercury what if there is hypoventilation or for any other reason carbon dioxide reaches 80 millimeters of mercury pressures so now as per equation 149 minus 80 divided by 0 0.8 so 149 minus 100 meaning the pressure of oxygen in the alveoli will reduce to 49 millimeters of mercury due to dilution by high carbon dioxide levels in alveoli. So remember around 70 to 80 millimeters of mercury carbon dioxide levels in the artery hypoxia is always present unless you raise the fraction of oxygen by oxygen therapies right. So same kind of hypoxia, this time hypoventilation causing raised carbon dioxide levels. For more detailed lecture of functional anatomy of lungs, click the link in top right corner. Now any disease causing alveolar capillary interface disruption and impairing the fine diffusion of oxygen from alveolar epithelium through the capillary endothelium will cause hypoxia. So adding ARDS pulmonary edema where alveoli are flooded with water or consolidations of pneumonia will cause hypoxemic hypoxia. To improve this compliance issue of alveoli, we then have recruitment maneuvers such as peak and expiratory pressures or PEEP, CPAP, deep breathing exercises post-surgery 
to reduce basal atelectasis. Similarly, balancing the PEEP and fraction of oxygen and ARDS net protocol and ventilatory strategies to reduce the shear stress on normally functioning alveoli. I have covered this topic on compliance of alveoli and ventilatory strategies for ventilated and spontaneously breathing patients. Link in top right corner. So now the oxygen reaches pulmonary capillaries through diffusion. Now in normal cases, oxygen pressures in the alveoli and capillaries are equal at 99 millimeters of mercury. It takes 0.8 second of transit time for blood running from one end to the other along the alveolar wall and oxygen equalizes within 0.3 seconds under normal situation. So added safety margin of 0.5 seconds is there. However, this transit time reduces during high cardiac output states such as exercise. So there can be limitations there. Let's see how much oxygen is dissolved under normal circumstances. Now as per Henry's law, oxygen diffusion in plasma is 0 0.003 milliliters of oxygen per millimeters of mercury oxygen pressure per deciliter of blood. What was the pressure of oxygen above in alveoli? 99. So round off to 100 for ease. Now 0 0.003 into 100 millimeters of mercury per deciliter of blood. So fair to say oxygen dissolved in 100 ml or 1 deciliter of blood at 100 millimeters of mercury alveolar oxygen pressure is 0 0.03 ml oxygen. For 1 liter of blood, this would be 0.3 multiplied by 10, so 3 ml of oxygen dissolved in 1 liter of blood. So for full circulatory blood volume of 5 liters contributing to the cardiac output per minute, it should be around 15 ml of dissolved oxygen. But hang on a second. Minimum metabolic demand of oxygen by resting body is around 250 milliliters of oxygen per minute, also called 1 MET score. Whereas dissolved oxygen going in the cardiac output is just 15 ml per minute. And this is where the role of hemoglobin comes in. The total arterial oxygen content is dissolved oxygen plus oxygen carried by hemoglobin, which actually contributes 97% to the total amount. And this is our topic for next episode, the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. So ARDS or any sepsis causing disruption of fine capillary endothelium side of alveolar capillary interface will cause hypoxemic hypoxia. But at this stage of cascade, two other types of hypoxia enter into the frame too, anemic hypoxia and stagnant hypoxia. This we will cover as we move along into the arteries and delivery of oxygen formulas. That's it for this time. Next episode, we discuss hemoglobin and its role in oxygen cascade. See you next time.